Oh my god, look at how hot he is in the Speedos. Yeah, what the fuck? Welcome back to Seeker Strength. Welcome back to Seek Stand. Today's episode is SNC Coaches react to the famous Werner Gunter, probably the most famous track and field training video on YouTube because 10 years ago it was the only track and field mm-hmm. basically training video on YouTube. So a lot of people have asked for this one. Probably the most requested, probably the most awaited from us as well, because it's probably something we should have done a while ago, but we're doing Werner Gunter today. So bronze medal at Seoul Olympics, but he won three world championships. He's a Swiss shot putter, best Swiss shot putter of all time, track and field. That doesn't mean that much, so though. Do you yeah. know if you were like, I was the best Chinese weightlifter ever, you'd be like, oh, are you? Yeah, feeling? yeah, yeah. I was the best... Um, Dutch field Jamaican ho- sprinter of all time yeah Dutch field hockey yeah, player yeah, yeah, or something yeah. you know that'll mean something but I'm not sure the Swiss sorry to any Swiss people watching but Werner is an absolute specimen of a human being if Werner walked into any track and field sport or any team contact sports I think at any age if they'd never played before they'd just be like you're on the team yeah 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 no Werner is a how I remember these videos originally is when I started weightlifting and I used to be showing people I was training with videos of weightlifters Mm -hmm. and then an older guy who was training in the club was like you think they're athletes Mm -hmm. wait till you see this guy Werner Gunther was that your first exposure Werner Gunther yeah so Werner this is just a video of Werner throwing but really it's just a gratuitous look at his legs and gusset Uh, he is like throwing technique is obviously something we know nothing about but uh, it's just to show he's a specimen yeah throwing like obviously the that's just the kind of lateral style of throwing now, you know, where they just, or they used to just step back into it. Mm-hmm. Now they'll do the spin. Yeah. Uh, which is interesting. It's just interesting how things have changed. So we've got uh, like a little diagram of his kind of training program. So intensive, extensive, intensive and explosive. So typically when you look at like periodization models, you'll kind of have three phases. Realistically, it's only two phases. So it's like a training phase and a competition phase. And then like a, a like a um, a down phase really if, if kind of what you put it as extensive intensive explosive so plosive i assume it's plyometric intensive heavier weights that i manages and extensive i'm going to assume preparatory phase yeah, broad a lot of wide stuff. ranging stuff it's at the bottom of the triangle so we can assume we're correct make that base nice and wide yep. even though it's interesting the highlighting of the words gets smaller as you go down here's a graph though oh so things are changing rapidly Yes. We well, don't know what these bar graphs are right. I assume one is volume and the other is intensity, maybe? And the third is drugs. Definitely drugs, because they're all flashing. I lights. assume the biggest one is the drugs one. Yeah. <laughs> Going from an 80s athlete. What else would you be looking at? I wish we knew what these graphs were saying. It doesn't matter. I don't think it's relevant to his training program, is it? So we're starting here. So Werner is doing... This would be kind of a... Typically a, a thing that we're never for, and that is recreating your sports specific stuff in the gym. Now, this is probably blurring the lines because this is more than likely a very sports specific training tool. So this comes into the realm of things where it's like there's a judo throw where there's three people doing a judo throw. There's a thrower, there's a partner getting thrown, and there's a third person resisting them or holding on to the person. And you're able to repeat these drills a lot or it's something like you might see wrestlers with a waistband around their hips to reinforce a certain habit. What we don't want then on the other side of that kind of sport specific activity in your gym is doing things like weighted baseball swings, weighted punches, uh, weighted paddles on your hand for swimming, things mm. like that, you know. So it's interesting the use of a balance beam here. Like this would be, if you were reading about this in a study, you'd call this a constraint, you know? So th- this isn't facilitating making the movement easier. It's constraining it and kind of limiting the the realms in which he's exercising. So in skill-specific practice like this, having a constraint is very interesting because it's by no means something you'd go to immediately. Like if, if Gurf was being taught how to throw a shot in this older style fashion for the first time, you'd never go to an immediate constraint like this. You'd probably go to some sort of facilitator, like using a lighter shot put or something along those lines. And you just wonder then, in this case, when they're using a constraint, is it because he had just kind of very specific issues? Mm-hmm. And like once you get somebody who's who's learned a skill, like is a, a very, very uh, able competitor with that particular skill, you have to bring in some sort of constraint like this to alter certain movement patterns in certain cases. So we will always kind of make way for 
certain sports specific scenarios like this and those drills even if it might make the most sense in terms of the sports science theory uh, a lot of these things might be kind of well proven anecdotally in terms of their sports specific activity so in those cases if unless there is a very like gratuitous reason like injury risk or very definitive like thing like weighted punches where you're like look this really isn't a good idea this is dumb you know mm. whereas in these scenarios you'd look at the coach you might have coached 10 Olympians he would say look I'm sure he's a pretty good idea yeah, what he's yeah, doing yeah. And a lot of times these coaches would be, have be historically very successful you know in these cases and certainly that tracks it would lead you to believe that coach is uh yeah, the blasé with which he's coaching this world champion Olympic medalist yeah, would yeah. lead me to believe it's not his first rodeo. He barely wanted to get up to catch the ball from there. Like. <laughs> so now, I also just want to comment on the, the lovely spandex. <laughs> very, 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 very far. So here we are just into traditional expl- upper body explosive plyometric movements. Yeah. You'd like to know as well, like if you saw this program as it was being written, whether this is being done for a specific skill development work mm-hmm. or if this is actually physiological adaptation work assuming from the bottom of the period called intensive I'm going to imagine this is just like the bottom base repetitions yeah. of like throwing movements uh, the uh, the medicine ball slams and medicine ball throws are quite popular but the uh, the use of them so in this scenario it makes sense I suppose for you doing throwing but for other athletes it's not exactly really there's the biggest bang for your buck in terms of plyometrics like it's 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 okay you know so here we're moving on to just general strength training. So we'll see a lot of back squats and Warner's program. And, and like these other throwers we've talked about, you know, a lot of it is just heavy weights. Heavy weights fast. Yeah. Double belt. Old style power lift or old style uh, strong man. Oh, he's got the little corset thing yeah. on the inside. Yeah. So in the extensive phase or the bottom period or the proprietary phase is what people would normally say or the prep phase. It's just a lot of local muscular fatigue, isolation work, general movements, very little sport specific stuff. And you'll see like even the sport specific stuff he was doing, it was very non-intensive. It was more kind of visualization of movements or like quality control of certain areas, but no large volume of sport specific movements. An interesting thing there on the leg press, you'll see his coach was pressing down harder on the kind of eccentric portion. So he was kicking up against the weight and then as he was bringing it down, he was controlling the weight and the way down. His coach was leaning on it. So could have had some sort of kind of like tendon preparation work or just making sure those quadriceps tendons are in a good place. Obviously, the, the eccentric portion is very, very important for that. Now, you'll see a lot of static stretching in this video and obviously stretching and mobility for a lot of people at the moment is a big no-no uh, from people who don't do any sports. Uh, just squat bench and sometimes. And I'm not even ragging on powerlifters. They're just not even powerlifters. Yeah, yeah. So obviously in these scenarios, so when you're going through a really explosive movement, you want the ability to relax your muscles as fast as possible and then contract them as much as possible in the shortest time frame. And this is one of the most fundamental movements for explosive athletic ability is the ability to relax quickly. And so a muscle that is tight for whatever reason is it uh, a weak muscle some might say a lot of people are saying oh tight muscle is just a weak muscle is it neurological inhibition it can depend on a variety of different things but for whatever reason static stretching has a benefit to this regard and so if we can move through this range of motion with less resistance whatever that is internal resistance for whatever reason if it is um, not scar tissue but adhesion points or whatever the literature refers to them at the moment whatever reason it is if we can move through these faster ranges of motion with less resistance in a more free fashion ideally you can produce and reproduce the quality of your sport specific movement more consistently and in a faster fashion and this is what he's looking for and he's very flexible for a dude who's two meters tall and 130 kilos insane flexibility a lot of flexibility particularly in the shoulders and upper body the hamstrings as well yeah so these are fabulous little exercises. just yeah very difficult to set up you'll actually see some similar variation of this in some of the programs you'll see like barbell row on a ghd mm-hmm. so very very nice exercise most people won't have a 1.8 meters tall block <laughs> that they can use in their gym or olympic level coach yeah yeah so we'll again see a bit of flexibility here sats pressing no problem from a behind the neck grip uh, and just a general warm-up sats press the front yeah very nice mind good Good morning. So just general warm up here with the barbell. We got miniature plates, or is he just really tall? I think they're small plates, and he is really tall. He's getting about with half sats press, the thoracic mobility. But if anyone's gonna need rotational mobility, thoracic mobility, it's yeah. gonna be a drummer. Absolutely. Outfit out of tender. 
Out of 10 is definitely uh, an 80s out of 10. Mustache out of 10? Uh, mid, mid to late 80s out of 10. So again, there's a lot more isolation work here. Pull over, his bicep, just general. I really like the amount of bodybuilding work they're doing. And particularly, you saw it with some bicep curls earlier where they're overweighting the eccentric again. Mm-hmm. Which for bodybuilding work makes the most sense. Like the eccentrics where you're going to get the most work done for bodybuilding. So you'll break down the muscle tissue the most. I think it was Zach was talking about this recently and it's something I've been doing a lot recently just kind of as part of my S&C programming and Anton's programming there's a lot of bodybuilding stuff you know and for athletes who don't do bodybuilding and don't do kind of general strength sports when you're doing other stuff bodybuilding feels really nice it feels I think the word Zach used was kind of restorative or recovery it mm. feels so nice because it's so non-invasive it's such a nice quality movement like this period of training probably feels quite pleasant to him if he's coming in, in shape and he, he looks to be in shape now this for me is the start of the famous videos. Oh, this is yeah, these oh, are the yeah that spandex outfit, these rebounding jumps, the the single leg jumps, very very explosive. I love that they're doing them on mats as well. Yeah. So typically, in some ways, mats actually wouldn't make a lot of sense, but in some ways, it makes sense. In this scenario: He's two foot, two meters tall, two foot tall, one hundred and thirty odd kilos. So typically, the softer material you're pressing against could inhibit some of the force you're pushing off but it's coupled with the fact that he's really big and strong yeah and he wants to keep his joints pretty safe you know and i think even when you see him hopping off the mat at the end how light and gingerly he hops Mm -hmm. like you can't just go slamming into a concrete floor in your bare feet if you're 130 kilos like you can certainly do it at 80 kilos but you can't do it at 130 I would like to know if it was a conscious decision to do these barefoot. Is there like a good reason or just makes sense to do them on the mats, keep them nice? Who knows? So these are, mm-hmm. if you were to look at like Fershansky's plyometric work, they would be like carte blanche, just like mm. these kind of progressions and movements. Yeah. So Swiss speak a lot of different languages. German, French, I think. Okay. Swiss, Swiss German or whatever. Loads of difference. I'm going to say this is isometric, concentric, and eccentric. How did you know and that? And then it's plyometric, yeah. statodynamic, yeah. or else statodynamic plus or negative. Mm-hmm. Uh, who knows? Who, how did you get? Who how, knows? Uh, you're some kind of... That's due to my fluency in, in French. I think you're going to say Spanish. <laughs> so what we've got here, some bottom-up squats, so concentric squats. There's an electronic machine controlling something here, though. Did you see that? I did. Coach is so blasé. I love it. That's the sense where you've been coaching all day and you just want to sit down and watch them. Yeah, and you're just controlling with the little dial. Yeah, whatever that is. I'd love to know what that is. Yeah. Because he's changing something there. Very interesting when you see the, the astronauts working out in space. Yes. Their resistance is controlled by vacuum. Oh. Yeah. Scary. <laughs> Danger. Danger. So some weighted jumps. Weighted jumps are, are quite interesting. So they, the power output would go down, but your ground reactive forces would increase when doing weighted jumps. Then we've got isometrics. So isometrics are probably the, the thing in this which are the least useful unless you think for a specific rehab. So isometrics in the this era were getting quite popular and they thought they were kind of going to be the next thing. So they thought they were going to be something that was going to be hugely beneficial for strength training possibly even for power production but a lot of that has come to show that it's just not really a useful tool for building these things it can be quite useful for measuring them and that's possibly where some of that issue came from so if they did like a mid tie isometric pull and they'd see four thousand pounds of pull force at, at like the knee level and they'd think shit this is a really useful way of producing that but what we saw was sometimes a lot of joint degradation if you do it too much and too frequently Funnily enough, though, it is quite useful for tendon rehabilitation, but it didn't really produce anything in terms of actual meaningful improvements in strength training. So more electrocuty bench pressy. Eccentric, concentric. Oh, so it's weighted eccentric and weighted concentric. Mm-hmm. So just a normal bench press. Yeah, what the fuck? I wonder what it's What's the electric thing? I don't know. If you know what the electric thing is, please do let us know. So explosive benching. 100 kilos, maybe? Hard to tell. Possibly more. Oh, that looks like more than 100 kilos. So isometrics again. The other thing with isometrics is like when they were looking at degradation of the muscle fibre itself, like the muscle fibre doesn't degrade half as much in an isometric as it would in like a strong concentric or even more so in an uh, 
an eccentric phase of movement. So when people saw that you could get like similar strength outcomes or appeared as though you get similar strength outcomes from isometric, so it makes sense mm-hmm. that you'd use the isometric. But as Garth was saying, it's just not the, uh, just ain't it. So these are just static dynamics. So I assume Paused. dynamic moving with pause in them. Yeah. So just a pause bench press, uh, being as explodey as possible. You know, the funny thing with training is that uh, if you do a lot of the right things and you're a talented athlete, the bad things just don't really matter that no. much. You know, they don't they don't end up detracting at all from your performance. You know, if you're doing a lot of the right things and we do the vast majority of stuff is the right things, you know. So. Don't tell him he's going to do some broad jumps with this. No, it's more static. Oh, wait, he's going to do static into broad jumps. Drops the bar and jumps straight away. I think I've, I've definitely seen this before. Oh, I've seen them all before, but I, my memory is not. What you should be getting excited for is the stadium seating that you can see on the left-hand side of your screen now because those steps are going to be made a fool of and later that, on. The ops, of course, there next to it. <laughs> so very long static. Very long static. And this is like, when this is being done, this is like the state of the art, the newest and best mm-hmm. stuff that you could see be like the equivalent of the kind of velocity based training you see today or even some of the kind of blood flow restrict there we go 100%. blood flow restriction training we see today where people are looking for the edge and they're trying to find the best possible thing to do uh, and that's what they're trying to do here as well it's just we now have a bank of literature and, and knowledge kind of built up that would say some of this is very useful some of it may not be so useful so what they might have been going for or maybe an early form of uh, PAP or post-activation potentiation mm. potentially so typically you'd see that from a heavy squat uh, or maybe a heavy deadlift or something like that straight into your plyometric activity and you'd see a short term to maybe medium term improvement in your performance it's possible isometric would enlist the same effect typically it's a weight around like 80 to 90 percent of a one repetition max so maybe an isometric but I've never really seen that in literature so I'd be interested to see if that was their reasoning here uh, against some single leg squats. See, it makes sense as well to try and use an isometric for that rather than 80 or 90% of one rep max. Especially as strong as he is. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you're you're really loading an athlete up quite heavily. If you could do an isometric for 60 seconds instead, it would be uh, a lot less risky. Like the single legs into, into single leg bounds doesn't just really make that much sense. Like you don't really want no. to be doing local muscular fatigue into a plyometric movement. It uh, so like we talked about a lot, you know, it's the speed of the movement that needs to be trained is the one, and you've heard us say this so much, you know, that you want to be moving fast, if you want to be training fast and getting fast results. What I'd really love to know is he's doing calf raises there, and the thing was called des chevilles. What does that mean? Well, cheval in French is horse. Okay. So under chevilles, baby horse, baby I.e. calf horse. So we got some Cossack squats with seventy kilos probably. Old school rubber crumb plates. I'm loving the outfit. I'd wear this outfit. <laughs> I'd be all over With this. the belt on? If I was squatting. Are you belt on for plyometrics or belt off? Um, <laughs> I hope the answer is only belt off. <laughs> so. Okay, so this is the most famous clip go. of them all. There we go. So just shit loads. Most people, see, this wouldn't work for most people because they wouldn't be able to produce this much power. So you just get really slow. Yeah. You start hitting hurdles, probably would make the steps, you know. But for him, this is the appropriate level of intensity for his plyometric work because he's so powerful and he's just getting after it. Some more kind of sport specific stuff, really. So I would assume this is kind of like... <laughs> Propulsion on poussé. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, glad we didn't watch this before and so what that so, <laughs> so what propulsion and is I'll tell you when you're older guys no um, so if you look at things like the dynamic body weight hypothesis series here like your lower body produces the most power at unweighted at body weight stuff you know and, and then you produce more power but less ground reactive forces if you do like facilitative jumping and stuff and there's positive outcomes there are positive implications from that like in literature and like over or in facilitative plyometric movements because you're training it faster so you could be helping facilitate the faster movement by training it 
So I'd imagine this is a lot easier than showing the shot, but... Yes. I'm probably going to hopefully say. Jesus. Uh, the other interesting thing here is, like, it's the... It's that momentum versus kinetic energy thing, you know? Yeah. So, like, if you look at a formula for momentum, it's mass times velocity versus the thing for kinetic energy will be mass times velocity squared. So then when you look at, like, is power output the most important thing? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah. Or is power output at certain weights or at certain force outputs the most important thing? Mm -hmm. Nobody knows the answer to this, by the way. It's, it's yep. like a... But for Werner, it's propulsion and pussy is probably the most <laughs> important thing. So we're, we're moving on here to these kind of strength training. So benching... In a prison yard. A prison yard, a lot of weight. Mike Tyson somewhere in the background. Oh no, he didn't go to jail since the 90s. That looks like it could be 180 kilos. That looks like that weight can't take, or that rack can't take that yeah. weight either. Jesus, he's a lot he bigger big here. Horse. Holy shit. Oh my God. Look at that back. Yeah. Oh my Look God. at how high those sweatpants come up. That's because he's in such good shape. You can do yeah. that, you know. Oh man, had a handkerchief in his pocket. It's a good coach. This is a long time ago. Oh, hips up. Doesn't matter. Fast pitch. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Look at how big and thick that man is. Look how big his hands are. Yeah. So, at least 150 maybe, maybe 160. Who knows? And this is less because they take plates off than there was previously. Jeez, they played hard and fast with those squat racks, didn't they? They didn't care. Like a tiny little sliver coming up either side of your head. He's not going to miss. Look at the that back. Is that Switzerland? Who knows where that is? Matt Nike's branding just hasn't changed and it still works. Yeah. You see significantly bigger here. Very big, yeah. Oh, old school. Maybe the extensive is drug free and intensive <laughs> is lots of drugs. Yeah, they don't dream of drugs, come on. <laughs> so, really nice back squats. Yeah. Little pop up at the end. Once again in a prison yard. Once again. This the little pop up at the top is funny, isn't it? I don't know if this is Switzerland. I think this is Mediterranean. I'm okay. Say. Greece, maybe. Maybe Greece, yeah. Back in the day. So, unfortunately, we have no idea what these squats weigh, lads, but I'm going to say... We do know he pulled his socks up higher on the sweatpants for these ones, so they're probably heavier. I'm going to say 220, at least. At least. They're yeah, good yeah, squats. Yeah. They're great quality squats. Oh, they're lovely looking squats. So, someone mentioned in the comments, actually, in one of our recent videos, uh, that uh, there's like a point of diminishing returns for moving heavy weights, and I think it was... The coach you're referencing is Bondarchuk, who is saying that once you get to a certain stage, there's no need. And that principle does apply, but it it kind of doesn't make sense to hold them back if things are still going well. You know, for if we look at some of those athletes like uh, Daniel Stahl, you know, if you're moving 300 kilos like that, then there's just kind of no reason not to do it in some ways. Yeah. Like if it's going that well, you know, yeah. it's, a, it's a funny scenario. I think that's the thing, though, is that where is that line? Yeah. Like it's very simple to measure where that line is now because you put a velocity meter on the bar or mm -hmm. you track someone's velocity during a throw. Nobody knew where that line was back then. Yeah. He certainly didn't with chest here. My God. Yeah, this can't be Switzerland. This is definitely... I'm going to say, I'm going to say like Tenerife, maybe. Maybe not. I'm going to say Greece. Even though it looks quite volcanic there, doesn't it? It does, it does. He's in some shape at the moment. Yeah. I think he's like... 13% body fat 14 maybe uh, nobody even cares about body fat when you have that much muscle but the ocean in the background there so so obviously just conditioning yeah. with a I suppose some plyometric work involved in it just good honest to god training yeah so I hope you enjoyed that my favourite so far yeah definitely the most aesthetically pleasing all around great training yeah <laughs> yeah just <laughs> Propulsion that we say, you know, great to see. <laughs> Phenomenal. Thanks for watching, guys.